Right now at 5, an update on the search for 15-year-old Kathleen Shepard. Good afternoon, everyone. Kevin Cooney here live in Dayton, right in front of the Southeast Webster Grant Elementary School. That is where Kathleen Shepard was last seen about 24 hours ago. Now, a news conference wrapped up just about a half an hour ago. Here is the latest on what we know. Authorities are focused on these three areas right here where we are at Southeast Webster Grand Elementary. As we said, where Catherine, Kathleen rather, and another 12 year old girl were abducted near a bus stop. A hog confinement in rural Pilot Mound where the 12 year old girl escaped and an area in rural Dayton where the body of the suspected kidnapper, Michael Klunder, was found. Authorities have just confirmed that he died by suicide, but they are still holding out hope that Kathleen will be found alive. We are very optimistic still. Uh, we're going to, we're going to, you know, our plan is that we're going to find her alive. Um, that's our hope. Uh, and we're, we're working very hard now to uh, find her. Now, a few details. Few details have been released about the 12 year old girl who, as we said, managed to escape shortly after the abduction took place. We will hear from the farmer who found her yesterday. That'll be in just a moment. But first, Laura Nichols has been out with search teams throughout the day and she joins us now just a few miles from here where a lot of those searches were taking place. Laura? Now, Patrick says the girl ran to his farm from a hog confinement operation about a half mile away. She was barefoot and scratched up at the time, but otherwise, Patrick said she appeared to be okay. He says he still has hope that Kathleen will be found alive. We got to go out and find her. And there are a lot of people in the community here who are holding out hope as well. Vanessa, you've been talking, Vanessa Peng's been talking with them and tell us what you found out. Kevin, this is just devastating news for a community where everyone knows everyone. And here's what some people told me earlier today. Now, earlier today at that con news conference we had talked about, you could see members from the community, you could see the pain in their faces as they continue to yeah. search for Kathleen. And Kevin, we just wish this community the best of luck. They have come together, and unfortunately, it has to be for something like this. Yeah. Thank you very much, Vanessa. Now, the Webster County Sheriff's Office is asking anyone with any information about the girls or information about Michael Clunder to get in hold of them. Now, they're specifically interested in the hours between 3 o'clock yesterday afternoon and 8 o'clock yesterday evening evening you can give them a call the tip line number is 515-573-1410 as you heard Laura said right now they're not looking for more volunteers or they don't need more people up here right now but if there is a situation where they do need more they'd like to have a list and if you would like to be on that list you're asked to first call this number don't show up but just call this number the webster county emergency management number at 515-571-6483 leave a message with whatever available resources you might have and your contact information of course we're going to continue to follow developments throughout the evening here in dayton but for right now let's get back to stacy horse who has a little bit more information in the studios about the suspected kidnapper in this case stacy okay kevin thank you very much now we want to check back in with Kevin Cooney live in Dayton with the latest on the search for 15 year old Kathleen Shepard. All right, Stacy. Well, law enforcement does continue the search efforts for Kathleen Shepard. She was last seen right here in this area outside this school about 430 yesterday. She was abducted along with a 12 year old girl. That little girl was able to escape. The suspected kidnapper, however, was found dead in a rural Dayton area about eight o'clock last night. Authorities say he committed suicide. Law enforcement say they are searching in a lot of areas. We have a rather large area uh, based on things that we are aware of where he was during certain times uh, yesterday afternoon and last night. Um, it's a large area and we, we have searched a lot of areas already last night and today. Um, we are searching areas right now. Um, anything is, is a possibility. Um, we get leads, we explore those leads and uh, right now we're still searching many, many areas. And once again, authorities are asking if anyone saw anything either regarding the suspect or regarding the individuals who are missing to give Webster County authorities a call, especially they're interested in between the hours of 3 o'clock and 8 o'clock yesterday in the afternoon and evening. Stacy. All right, Kevin, we'll be right back. Thank you. You're watching KCCI 8 News. Breaking news tonight, an explosion rocks the Country Club Plaza in Kansas City. What caused it? 
the number of people injured, and how many are missing tonight. Also, downtown changes. It's really just, it's become more of a back door when it, when it really should be a front door coming off of, of 235. The popular Des Moines route that's next on the list for a facelift. But first, casino plans for Warren County, and the big difference between this gambling proposal and Prairie Meadows. Now, from Iowa's news leader, this is KCCI 8 News at 10 in high definition. Good evening, everyone. They are calling this the biggest opportunity in the history of Warren County. A casino with a $100 million impact. KCCI's Emily Price has a preview of the plans. Also new tonight, the Des Moines School Board has voted to close the Gateway School. The motion has been approved. Four in favor and three against. There you hear it, four in favor to close Gateway, to three to prevent it from closing. Administrators say Gateway School was too expensive to keep open. More than 170 students attended the International Baccalaureate Middle School. Tonight's meeting was packed with concerned parents, and many of them say that they're disappointed with this decision. It certainly was a four to three vote, but I can also remind you that three years ago, just three years ago, there was a seven to zero vote to open Gateway. You don't close a school after three years. The school is expected to close after the 2013-2014 school year. Also new tonight, no pawn shop for Windsor Heights, at least for now. The Board of Adjustment there voted four to nothing to deny the special licensing permit for a new pawn shop. The owners of the shop wanted it to go in a strip mall off 73rd Street near I-235. Critics say they were concerned about the location because that same strip mall is already home to a payday loan office. They believe the addition of a pawn shop would have been bad for surrounding businesses. An update to the breaking news that we brought you at 6. A massive explosion in Kansas City after a gas leak at a restaurant on the plaza. Well, it's still about two days away, but a lot of people are thinking snow. Chief Meteorologist John McLaughlin has the early details, predictions, prognostications, and more. Yes, and uh, so far we still haven't been able to get up to those 20-inch amounts here in central Iowa that we're... Uh, Bantied about earlier, but could be impressive nonetheless. Thank you, John. It has happened on Fleur Drive, Ingersoll, ML King Parkway, and Locust Street. And now it's Keoway's turn. KCCI's Todd Magel explains in a story that's new at 10. Todd? Kevin and Stacey city leaders are calling it downtown's forgotten street. And of course, Keo runs right in front of our studios out here. Yes, so we'll have does. a kind of a front row seat to see how this all goes. Be interesting to see how it all goes. But you mentioned the $250 million principal proposal, you know, the renovation and everything that they're going to do on their campus. Is that a done deal, actually? Uh, it won't be until next week, probably. That's when the okay. board votes. And there's a good bet they'll probably vote yes. And then that will provide the catalyst for this Keo way project to start as well. All right, all good to know. Thanks, Todd. Mm -hmm. Day one of the shutdown is coming to an end without a deal. Even tonight, lawmakers have rejected a series of measures to reopen parts of the government. These proposals would have reopened the national parks and museums, allowed veterans claims to be processed. Senate Democrats are accusing House Republicans of cherry picking programs. And now negotiations are back to square one. Danielle Nottingham has the new information for us tonight. But with all this going on, it seems one story is the one that everyone's talking about. It involves honor flights and includes some veterans from Iowa and their determination to visit the World War II monument in D.C., a monument that, yes, was closed by the government shutdown. I'm not excited it's shut down, but I'm, I'm glad we got to see this. The sign said it all. The monument was closed. The government was shut down. Park rangers were there on their phones and hundreds of vets from places like Story County, Iowa and Mississippi were facing them down. After all, these men had planned for months to visit this special place. And with the help of some members of Congress, even a bagpiper, they were looking them square in the eye. This time, no opposition. Couldn't even call this a skirmish. We have people who have come from all over the country to see this memorial. Park Service did not want to barricade these, but unfortunately we have been directed because of the lack of appropriations to close all facilities and grounds. Well, there was some thought that they were going to close us down today and not let us on. And they flooded in these men from the Second World War, the Korean and Vietnam Wars too. Literally men on a mission. I've never seen this memorial and it's really quite an elegant memorial. They came, they saw, and they conquered. It has been a great opportunity to come here with the Story County people. 
and they will be returning home within the hour they are expected to arrive at the Des Moines Airport. The story of these veterans is getting a lot of attention on our free website, KCCI.com. Dozens and dozens of you have shared and commented on the story, including, for example, James E. Byerly. He wrote, they took Normandy, a barricade is nothing. And the government may be shut down, but it's not stopping the next phase of the health care law from kicking in. The rollout had a few glitches today. Millions of Americans trying to get on the website all at once. That caused a few delays. According to the Obama administration, 6 in 10 people will be able to purchase a plan for less than $100 a month with the help of tax credits. An Iowa man is facing some pretty stiff drug charges in Ohio tonight. Authorities say 49-year-old Alfredo Ramos of Marshalltown helped to transport a lot of cocaine. Ramos and another man from California were pulled over near Columbus, Ohio, and inside their semi-rig, troopers say they found 53 pounds of cocaine. A new machine is helping save women's lives here in Iowa. Tonight, the mammogram that is helping to detect hidden cancer cells. It's at one Metro hospital. Also, learning a language for life. The Metro school that hopes to have a group of students fluent in Spanish by the time they finish up the fifth grade. That begins in about 25 seconds. We are out of here now. Thank you very much for being here. We'll all be back again tomorrow.